There's so much damaging information that has been coming out about sunscreens lately. People like me keep telling you that you need to wear sunscreen. However, you keep seeing articles that tell you how toxic sunscreens are and that they are bad for you. They tell you that sunscreen is meant to prevent skin cancer. However, people are telling you that sunscreen causes cancer. I mean, all of it is just so much that we should all just start making our own sunscreens at home from natural ingredients, right? No. 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 Hell no! So I brought the people with the information here to answer some of your most pressing questions about sunscreen and to bust some myths as well. And I'm gonna tell you why making your own sunscreen ain't the flex that you thought it was gonna be. Sunscreens cause cancer. We ain't got a lot of time, so we just gotta get right into it. You know what I'm saying? They do not, or at least we don't have evidence that they do. We have good evidence that they do prevent certain types of cancer, especially skin cancer, in people who are susceptible. And that is why we're using sunscreens to protect us from the UV radiation that we know is cancer causing. However, there is some data showing that some of the chemical sunscreens. I do get absorbed by the body, but a lot of ingredients do. So there's nothing to be alarmed about. So even with that, with those studies being out, it still has not been proven that sunscreen causes cancer. I think this also hit very high last year when headlines hit that the carcinogen benzene was found in a lot of sunscreen and after sun products. So first off, benzene is not an ingredient in cosmetics. It has no function. It should not be there. So it's an impurity. It is not just sunscreens. Benzene has been found in lots of other products as well. So hand sanitizers, there was a recent dry shampoo recall as well where benzene was found. So it's not a specific sunscreen thing. So benzene is a carcinogen. It can cause cancer in really high quantities. Usually it is with people who work with benzene. So they're getting a lot of exposure. With the amounts that have been found in cosmetic products, it's been really low. It's been less than about five parts per million, which is a fraction of a drop in a can of product. So even if you're using a product with that benzene contamination in it every day, you are probably getting less than half the amount that you would get from breathing in city air. There is benzene in the air because it's an additive to petrol. And so, yeah, we've got all these other exposures to benzene. There is a professor who is an expert in benzene and he recommended that the best thing you can do to lower your exposure to benzene is to not park your car in a garage attached to your house because the petrol evaporating from your car is going to give you a lot more benzene exposure than pretty much anything else, including your cosmetics. The study was done by a lab called Valishaw and they actually sell their services for testing different contaminants and products and they've been trying to get the FDA to hire them as like an official independent testing lab. So there is a conflict of interest. I don't think there is a problem with the actual data itself, but the way they talked about the data, the way they talked about how benzene is really dangerous, how the amounts found in your products are really dangerous and you need to dispose of them through hazardous waste, all of that is very overblown. Now I realize some of you come into this video without ever hearing me uttering a word about why sunscreen usage is important, especially when it comes to skin of color. So I'm gonna break it down to you really quick. Five reasons of many, but I'm gonna name you five. One, sun exposure causes about 89% of the premature signs of aging. And yes, your black will crack too. Number two, UVA rays, that's one of the wavelengths that come from the sun, as well as visible light, which is also a wavelength that comes from the sun. These are things that can worsen pigmentation and you know what we suffer a lot from pigmentation well, number three and I'm just throwing this in here cuz I need y'all to know not all sun damage is visible by the naked eye sometimes that must be deep and you can't see it with your two eyes so your four eyes number four some of our skincare products make us more sensitive to the Sun number five physically speaking we're less likely to suffer from skin cancer now, that doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen and unfortunately when it does happen it's bad because no one really thinks to check our skin for skin cancer and by the time it's found out sometimes it's too late it's already so far progressed so those are just five reasons why you should be wearing sunscreen right but why the f does it need to sting our eyes not like oh specific science to it it's like way more complicated than that so like like you said like some of your audience they think that it's the chemical sunscreens that are you know 
thinking their eyes, which is like why why they most likely opt for like mineral sunscreen. But that's like not necessarily true. I, pr- I presume that a lot of your islands in the U.S. as like you don't have like those more elegant filters. We have like the, the outdated ones. Those ones sometimes can be more more common to sting our eyes compared to like let's say sunscreens from like Asia or like Europe. But for some people, it may not even be the filters like, in chemical sunscreens or mineral sunscreens that's stinging their eyes. For some people, it can actually be um, the emollients. And emollients are the ingredients that are like helping like uh, smooth our skin out and make it feel like soft and smooth. Some of some of that can be um, stinging somebody's eyes, or it can be like an interaction of all the ingredients together that's causing that, that eye sting. It's not like exclusive to chemical sunscreens. Even mineral sunscreens can, can, can even sting your eyes. So I would say that um, eye sting is more unique to like the consumer and which, whatever sunscreen they are using. Uh, it's really like an individual experience. So it, it depends. I, I don't know if anyone's going to like the answer, but it's true. It depends, like, which is why you should patch test. So here's the thing. I asked our experts this question knowing full and damn well that <laughs> there's no straightforward answer to this because sunscreen sting in your eyes, unfortunately, can be a very subjective thing. For instance, I got sunscreens that I wear all the time. 98% of the time, they do not sting my eyes. And then 2% of the time, it's like, why is it stinging my eyes? Like, it usually doesn't. And this is whether it's water resistant or not. There's just no rhyme or reason to it. Heck, I even tried a mineral sunscreen that was made specifically for the eyes that still burned my eyes. But Lab Muffin Beauty Science offered this as a possible workaround. For me, the best bet has been if I get a mineral sunscreen stick. So my favorite for this is the Neutrogena Sheer Zinc Stick. And I put that around my eyes and then I put my sunscreen around it. And that seems to help sort of um, give like a border zone. <laughs> like a non-militarized zone around my eyes where the sunscreen can't get. We were talking mineral and chemical. Now here's the thing with that. Why would somebody want to choose a mineral sunscreen over a chemical sunscreen? Well, for some people it may just be personal preference. Some may like one over the other. I prefer a chemical sunscreen because I ain't got the time to be layering thin layers and, and you know, uh, you know and all that other stuff and with the white cast. I ain't got time for that. So chemical sunscreen all the way from me. However, there are some people who are sensitive to some of the filters. Again, the filters are what they put in the sunscreen to help protect you from the sun. There are some people who are allergic to the UV filters that are used in chemical sunscreens. And in that case, a mineral sunscreen may be more appropriate for them. Everybody's skin, your lifestyle, the climate where you live, your pockets, the coins that are in those pockets, those all vary amongst us. So the sunscreen that you are going to wear often and reapply when you're out in the sun, that's the perfect sunscreen for you. The one that you like, the one that's gonna look good and feel good to you is the best sunscreen for you. So now how do you go about wearing this stuff? I had one of you ask, as a matter of fact, I've seen this comment before because there's a, uh, I think a dermatologist who, or maybe more than one dermatologist, that you need to apply your chemical sunscreen before you put on your serums and moisturizers because in their thinking that the chemical sunscreen needs to absorb into your skin first and then you apply your serums and your moisturizers and they wrong. On clean skin, you want your more active treatment ingredients to go on first and you could put on your sunscreen last. Sunscreens work right out of, they work right in the bottle and they work right outside of the bottle. It's already starting to work. You just need to make sure that you're applying like an even layer at the very end of like your skincare routine to make sure that um, you're getting that full coverage, allowing the um, the film, the sunscreen film to sit on your skin to get um, that coverage. And um, here's why you probably want to put down the red raspberry oil, coconut oil, the toothpaste, thoughts and prayers, whatever it is that y'all are putting into your homemade sunscreens. Here's why you probably don't want to do that. This is a, this is a no, no. This is a no-no. This sun, sun, again, sunscreen is is monitored. Any manufacturer that is launching a sunscreen product has to follow specific protocols. They have to use the accepted, approved ingredients by the FDA at certain levels. AKA whatever concoction you're making at home is probably not going to cut it. Uh, making your own sunscreen with essential oils is a really bad idea. There's actually a lot of things in essential oils that can make your skin even more sensitive to UV. So you could actually go the other way and make, I don't know, a sun multiplier instead of a sunscreen. So there's no such thing as a natural sunscreen. <laughs> Some people like to refer them 
as like mineral sunscreens. Um, however, mineral sunscreens aren't even natural themselves because titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, they need to be processed before they're even used in personal care. So you actually want the synthetic zinc oxide. At the end of the day, synthetic is often safer for you because nature is not that great for us. Nature is often trying to kill us. I mean, I live in Australia, so nature kills you is like a very accepted thing here. And that's the case with natural ingredients and products as well. So we talked about heavy metal contamination with zinc oxide. There's also things like allergens. If you have sensitive skin, then I mean, you can think of things like poison ivy, stinging nettles. Those are not good for your skin. There's lots of different irritants in tons and tons of natural products. Products. It's just a lot harder to control than something that you make carefully in a lab. It's sunscreen is not 100% full, it's not 100% foolproof. That's like why you can't call it sunblock in the in the US. So if one prefers like a more natural quote unquote way with less chemicals, even though everything is a chemical, everything is a chemical. Okay, <laughs> the the best way in my opinion, or like a, a more effective way, is to, to use like a combination of things. Use UV protective clothing. Use a UV visor. Um, hats. Uh, glasses, etc. There's really interesting tech that goes into UV protective clothing. There's coatings that they sometimes use. You can even add that coating yourself. I think there's a brand called Ritz Sunguard where you can wash your clothes with it and it'll coat your clothes with that UV protective layer and I think you can wash it maybe 10 times before it goes away. The safest thing to do is to pick clothes that have a UV, um, UV protective uh, factor labeled that's called a UPF. It's very similar to SPF. The difference though is that with UPF it's just more reliable because you don't have to have like the right thickness of the layer. The layer doesn't wear down. UPF clothing really underrated but a lot of clothing does protect against UV as we can tell because if you've ever got like a tan line obviously you're getting some protect more protection under your clothes. In general what you're looking for is darker clothing tends to do better because the darker dyes absorb more which is less good because like you know you don't want to be wearing dark clothes in the sun. Also, if it's a dense mesh, so you can sort of estimate this just by looking through it and seeing how much light passes through it. In general, if it's knitted rather than woven, it's also better. So if it's like stretchy clothing rather than like, I guess, like more formal shirt clothes that don't stretch much. Also synthetic fibers tend to be better. But y'all, even with this video, there's a lot of y'all out there still making sunscreen mistakes and I want you to not. So we're gonna talk about that in this next video and I'll see you over there.